everybody. You guys may have noticed the past couple mornings, I have not been up doing our morning trending topics show. Well, look, that's because, look, I got to be honest, and y'all know it's true, too. If you follow things on social media, it has been dry as I don't know what out in these internet streets. It's been dry, y'all. So, look, when I do the morning show, you know, I get up at 6 a.m. Um, so that I can have a nice, uh, relaxed morning show and then, you know, do it before I go to work. Well, look, if the streets are dry, look, candy girl needs to stay in her bed and get her last bit of sleep instead of getting up at six in the morning because the little bit of tea that it is trickling out definitely is not worth, you know, any of us <laughs> getting up that early in the morning to partake in. So here we go in the late night hour. I'm just going to do a little upload, you know, and, and go over any and everything that's been happening that we can talk about. So let's go over here. We're going to start, you know, I try to hit up all the major little gossip sites and see what's going on. So let's take a look here. I'm going to share my screen here and we'll start at the shade room, see what they have going on as far as what's going on in these social media streets. So let's see. Huh. Let's see you guys. Anything interesting here? Let's see what's this. Uh, Alexa Sky, that's nothing. Um, let's see this. Now, as you guys know, Beyonce has announced that she's delving into country music now. So she's basically trying to take over this genre too and uh, dragging the beehive right along with her. And so um, this past week, she's had some little country looks with her little cowboy hats and everything. So they're asking you which of your Beyonce's favorite recent looks is your favorite. So let's scroll through these. I'm gonna tell you what I think is my favorite. So this is what she wore to the Grammys. So uh, honestly, I looked at this before. I don't too much like this. A couple people on the panel liked it. I mean, I guess it's okay, but it's not my favorite. Uh, so yeah. Now, I kind of like this one. I like this little look here, especially without the hat. I think it's cute, but I like this little look. Um, this is cute. This is something that she wore. I guess her um, nephew was in a fashion show, so she wore this. Um, I saw it reported earlier. It looks like it's just a blazer, you know, um, with the boots, matching boots and a hat. Eh, yeah, it's okay. And here's the other version of that first outfit that she wore to the Grammys, but this is with the pants instead. Uh, let's see. Red's always going to be a winner to me, a head turner. So, yeah. But, oh, you know what? Look at this, you guys. I think this is my absolute favorite. Now, I definitely wish she had to put something a little bit more than the bikini-looking underwear. but um. The top part, PA, uh, I think this might be my favorite, this black lace little number here. So that's enough of that. So let's see. What's going on here with Birdman? So let's see. Birdman recently turned 55 years old, you guys. And I will say on this picture right here, let me blow it up here so you guys can see. Look, Birdman, you know, whether you think that he's attractive or not, I think he's looking damn good for 55 years old. You know, look, 55 years old ain't how it used to be. He's in shape. He says, 50, 55 years rock star. Happy birthday to myself, you know? And so, yeah, happy birthday to you. Look, everybody ain't able. Everybody don't make it to 55. So happy birthday to you. So this next little bit of news here, you guys, let's take a okay. Okay, so you guys, a little bit of teenage news here. It looks like um, Diddy's daughter Chance is dating 
Chloe and Hallie's uh, brother, uh, what's his name, uh, Branson. So Branson Bailey, they're dating. So, you know, little young love here. Let's see what's on this next slide here. Little teddy bear, I guess that's what maybe what he got her for Valentine's Day. But look, let me make this picture bit bigger. He is looking just like Chloe. Skin Chloe. Look at him. They look identical. Cute little young couple. Okay. So they're dating. Let's see. So Fannie Willis testifies during election interference case. I'm not on trial. So evidently something happened here where um, it says district attorney Fannie Willis is trending after she testified in court during an evidentiary hearing seeking to disqualify her from the election case against former President Donald Trump. During the testimony, Willis was questioned about her physical relationship with Nathan Wade, the special prosecutor she chose to lead the investigation. Willis says her relationship ended before former President Trump and his allies were indicted by her office in August 2023. Willis was visibly upset by the accusations against her and explained she reject, objected to records requests made by the defense lawyer, Ashley Merchant. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. It is the defendants, she said, who were on trial for trying to steal an election. So let's see what she's saying. intrusive into people's personal lives. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. So so your office objected to us getting um, Delta records for flights that you may have taken when no, Mr. Wade. Well, no, no, no. Look, I object to you getting records. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. So, so okay. your office. I guess she told them. And look, it looks like she made an impression on Plies because Plies had this to say. He said, after watching Fannie Willis on the stand, I'm turned on. I know that thing good. Fannie, hire me. I'll work for free. He said, I want Fannie to free thug, but outside of that, I got to see about Fannie Willis. Ain't never been this turned on in my life. I know she smelled good too. Talk that talk to me, Fannie. You ain't got to pay me. I'm going to pay you. I know Fannie wet, wet. I mean that in the most respectful way. <laughs> How is that respectful? Then he goes on to say, Fannie Willis, uh, F that case and run for president. I'll VP for you. <laughs> So look, he loved that. Now, here we go right here, you guys. Uh, <laughs> Megan the Stallion's birthday is today, you guys. And so these are some of her birthday pictures that she shared right here. So wishing her a happy 29th birthday. Look, these people in these comments so wild and disrespectful. Somebody said Bigfoot, Bigfoot was discovered 29 years ago today. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, happy birthday, Megan. You know, she's having a lot of success with her record. Um, her new album is highly anticipated, and I am wishing her the best. Now, here's something right here, you guys. It states Kanye West and Ty Dolla Sign's Vultures 1 album removed from Apple Music following a distributor dispute. It says Ye recently dropped his joint album, Vultures 1, with Ty Dolla Sign. He's having issues with his distribution company per Variety Fuga, F-U-G-A, listed as the distri distribution service in YouTube's metadata for the album. West uploaded the album to DPS, or D excuse me, DSPs on Saturday through its automated process. However, this was after the company had previously declined to distribute the record. F-U-G-A claims to work directly with streaming platforms, to remove the album from their respective databases. Reports share that it has been removed from iTunes stores and Apple Music. So, uh, I don't know. You guys have to tell me, what do you guys think about this? Are they really trying to blackball him? Has Kanye talked too much? You know, recently, you know, he's been laid, labeled an anti-Semite um, against his uh, statements that he's made about the Jewish community. And look, I'm not gonna pull no punches and lie to you. 
you know, when you come for the Jewish community, you can easily get yourself canceled. Easily. You come for the Jewish community, you come for the gay community, you can uh, wrap it up. So we'll see if Kanye West is, is as invincible as he thinks that he is, um, because he, you know, he says what he wants to say. So here's a statement via Variety. Late last year, FUGA presented with the opportunity to release Vulture One. Exercising our judgment in the ordinary course of business, we declined to do so. FUGA shared in a statement to Variety. On Friday, February 9th, 2024, a longstanding FUGA client delivered the album Vultures One through the platform's automated process, violating our service agreement. Therefore, FUGA is actively working with its DSP partners and the client to remove Vultures One from our systems. So he pissed off someone there because they are refusing, refusing to um, put his album out. So the next thing we're going to take a look at here, you guys, is it says, Phew, Zendaya stands in a Mueller look for the dune part two premiere so it looks very ai <laughs> so yeah it says one thing about zendaya she never disappoints she stepped out in this terry mugler mugler fashion week 95 look for the premiere of dune part two so uh yeah I think it's very creative. Let me make it bigger. See if I can make it bigger here. I think it's very creative. Let me get it off her buns there. Yeah. And she always seems to partake in the um, fashion shows and things like that and models for people. And they love to see her um, representing them. So go ahead, Zendaya. Looks like she's getting a little assistance walking out. I'm, I'm not sure. I, maybe that's her um, stylist with her. I think it's very creative. I mean, it's definitely not something that you would actually wear anywhere, but uh, yeah, very creative for what it is. So here's something that has been brewing this week, and it looks like it's finally come to a resolution. You guys know um, Mike Epps and Shannon Sharp have ha exchanged words. Um, Shannon Sharp even said, Hey, if I meet you, it's on, you know, it's on and popping when I see you after the things that you've said about me. But it looks like, you know, um, we did report in our last morning show that they stated that they were going to come together and meet and, you know, are not their differences. And it looks like that happened. So Shannon Sharp said, As promised, no video required, no audio required, just a picture for proof. We are good couple pictures of them together. Let's see. And this is the um, where we reported prior where it says Unk and the real Mike Epps have decided to have a man-to-man -man conversation in Indy at NBA All-Star Weekend to discuss our differences. We both realized this situation could have been, should have been handled differently. I apologize to fam, friends, and loved ones, and my fans. And that was coming from Shannon Sharp. Now, wait a minute. Wait. I'm going to put this out there. Uh -huh. and yeah. So we, you know, some of this we've already played on the show, so we're not going to revisit, but just a little update that, you know, things seem to be good. Now, this one I found a little funny, you guys. We're going to move on to this next little blurb here. It states Rihanna and ASAP Rocky spotted in Paris on Valentine's Day. Look, I'm going to play the video, you guys. <laughs> Rihanna was three sheets to the wind. She was feeling good this Valentine's Day. Look, she... She's a good thing. It's a good thing she had her man there because she was not, she was barely on her feet. Hello, beautiful Rihanna. One stop. Hey, hey, one stop. Yeah, one stop. Yeah, one stop. Yeah, one stop. Yeah, stop. Thank you, Rihanna. Oh my God. Happy Valentine's Day, guys. Hey, I love you, bro. Thank you, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Cut the cameras now. Thank you very much. Rihanna Hello. was drunk. Look, she was stumbling. The lights was flashing in her face. And look, but she had her man by her side to hold her up, literally. So, yeah, looks like, you know, I'm so happy for her. She has the family she wants, the man she wants that's making her happy. And, you know, I wish their relationship much success. Now, so this is something else here um, 
we've been following this story, you know, ever since Monique had her interview with Shannon Sharp. You know, Shannon Sharp is getting everybody in their feelings, y'all. But Monique had her interview. And this is the crazy thing to me is that Monique only brought her son's name up when she was asked about him. And I'm of the opinion that that was the only reason he brought was brought into the interview at all is because Shannon Sharp asked her about her son. Otherwise, she wouldn't have not brought him up at all. I think it would have been very peculiar if she had have pointedly ignored the question. And it would have, you know, caused more of a stir for her specifically avoiding the question. So she answered the question quick and simple. Well, all week long, this young man has had something to say and trying to get a little bit of shine and make more like, hey, okay, I get it. You and your mom don't get along. Okay. You go your way, she goes her way. But she wasn't talking about you. She wasn't berating you or putting you down. She simply asked a question because it was asked of her. And to not have answered the question, in my opinion, would have made more of the situation. So let's see what he has to say here, you guys. Hi, I'm Shalon. <laughs> I'm gonna jump right into it. I guess the intelligent thing to do when assuming that your son is having a mental episode is to post personal screenshots of text messages that are three years old in an attempt to validate a false narrative as if they are some type of receipt. You also invaded the privacy of my daughter's grandparents by posting your receipts. Neither of you should never speak on mental health again if you thought that that idea was a good one. As a person who lives with mental health issues, let me be the first to educate you that there are individuals who have taken their lives harmed and also taken the lives of others for doing the very thing that you so proudly did and your fan base pats you on the back for, which is very telling to how strangers will buy into your toxicity. Picking up the phone to check on your son that you believe is having a mental episode to make sure that he is okay, while also making sure that your granddaughter is safe is too much to ask, I guess. For those wondering, I have gone to therapy on several different occasions, and that is not something that I will ever be ashamed of. I have even gone to therapy with my mother on several occasions. But for those who know how efficient therapy works, therapy only works when both people are being open. My mother was still in her 15-year-old mentality phase during that time, so I guess I understand why she did not know how to be open with me during our sessions. When a person becomes accustomed to being a victim and others get used to seeing them as one, they live their lives in a state of internalization, meaning you consistently receive another's approach as an attack, constantly putting, excuse me, constantly putting you under the illusion that you need to always be on the defense, even in situations where there is no actual attack, just an acknowledgement of things already said by you. One should not feel attacked by an acknowledgement of the words that they stand on. You eventually become a passive aggressor. To address the men that had something to say in regards to men don't do what I'm doing, let me be very clear. How I man is none of your business. What and how I feed my family has no place on your plate. For every person that stated I should not have come to the internet, I would just like to ask, what do Club Shay Shay, the articles about my mother and I's relationship, the interviews about our relationship, and Instagram all have in common? Well, if you are competent, the internet. Furthermore, I did not expose my mother, nor did I badmouth my mother. I simply provided context to what was already being said about me, while also explaining why I don't speak to them directly. <clears throat> the reason those that feel negatively about what I said are just having a hard time differentiating between Nikki Parker and Monique. Please stop with the cornball idea that a celebrity can talk about a family member on the internet for years, but God forbid said family member says any one thing and you all are outside with tiki torches and pitchforks defending not the actual person, but the idea of a per person. These people are in an 
industry that is efficient at making money off of what is pretend. Not only is she still my mother, she's also a part of history. And I would be doing my daughter a disservice by not telling her about who my mother is and was. But since those messages that you posted were used as some type of a receipt to validate your false narrative, I figured I would take some time to gather up my receipts to validate my decision to move forward with my life without my mother in it. Um, I do want to thank you all for listening for the now final time that I will ever address this topic, and I will leave you with my receipts. Okay, we're going to stop it there because, of course, we started with the music. So, yeah. I think that Monique's son is a grown man. He is a father himself. And if he is not wanting to really um, rectify what's wrong in the relationship that he has with his mother, I think it's just definitely time to move on and let bygones be bygones. If you guys are insistent on not having a relationship, regardless on whose end it's coming from, let that be that and just move on. You know, you're, you're, I think you have a lot of complaints about the time in your mother's life when basically she was building a career as a single mother. I've never heard any reports of you being ne neglected in the aspect that you didn't have food and clothing and shelter and things of those natures. And, and look, don't come for me. I know that there are a lot of other components to having a happy child, but I very much think that this is something that happens when a parent is out there basically trying to become who they need to become for themselves as well. You know, like you're, you're grinding, you're out there grinding, you're trying to get gigs, you know, she's moving from city to city, she, but she's doing it for the both of you. She's not just doing it for herself. She's doing it for you too. I mean, I've, there, there's been funds set aside for this young man that he's run through. So I'm not surprised as part for the course that you're bitter, you know, and you want to place blame somewhere. Um, for all we know, a lot of this blame is coming because you don't have any funds and you wish that you had some, you know, even though you can see the fight and the struggle that your mother has taken on her back to get what she feels that she deserves. I just think it's a crazy situation, you know, that is your mother, you know, you are her son, and I wish the both of you would come together and come to some resolution as far as your relationship. And I pray and hope that, um, you know, it may take time for it to happen, but I definitely hope that it happens for the two of you. Okay. So I'm taking a quick look through these other social media um, platforms. And you guys, like I said, it's been very dry out here. Not too much of anything going on. I guess I'll show this last little video that I have with Tia Kemp, who is just becoming, you know, a little wild out here. But she has something to say about, let's see, let's see. I see Kevin Hart and Tasha K. So let's see. Girl, I've been suiting up, you short <laughs> hobbit looking. <laughs> Go sit your short. It's rich ass down trying to sue somebody. You know you was trying to pray not to pull your post your shit. Now you want to try to sue a bitch. Sit your ass down too, bitch. I'm sick of all you bitches. All y'all sick ass bitches. <laughs> hey shit, Kevin, how I go suck? Leave Tasha Kay alone. Girl, I'm just up. You sure? Okay. <laughs> and that's enough for her. She's putting her mouth on everything and basically trying to. I I don't know what's going on with Rick Ross, baby mama, because uh, she has a lot to say these days. You know, so I, uh, yeah, that's Rick Ross, baby mama, y'all. So, okay, so we ran through a few of the small things that are going on in social media. Like I said, it's definitely not enough for us to wake up at six in the morning 
you know, and have these uh, seven o'clock shows and things like that. So we're just going to come until, until the juices get rolling and things are happening, you guys. We'll just uh, get our little videos in and lives in. Um, definitely, you guys, we did have a live last night. Um, I thought it was a very interesting topic that not many people had um, been aware of. So check out yesterday's video on um, incels and fem cells um, and those in the black community. So check that out. And we will see you guys next time for a candy coated conversation. You guys have a wonderful remainder of your evening. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.